today's session of adolescent psychology we will be discussing about challenges to early and late development the main objectives in this lesson are to understand briefly about puberty the challenges faced due to early and late pubertal development and the changes in the adolescent brain or cognitive development introduction let us have a brief discussion on puberty Puberty is one of the most profound biological and social transitions in the lifespan. It begins with subtle changes in brain neuroendocrine processes, hormone concentrations and physical, morphological or structural characteristics and concludes with reproductive maturity. The onset and trajectory of the hormone and physical changes that characterize puberty are well documented. Puberty as a social construction is a more complicated concept and entails definitional uncertainty regarding the onset or beginning and offset or end of puberty. Social role passages into new reference groups, perceptions of body, self and sexual image and expectations for independent and mature behavior are a part of puberty. Puberty as an integrated biological and social construction has fascinated scholars, artists, parents and adolescents alike for centuries and cultures have ritualized puberty to varying degrees. The biological changes of puberty are universal but the timing and social significance of these changes to adolescents themselves, societies and scientific inquiry vary across historical time and cultures. Nonetheless, there is widespread agreement on the profound biosocial complexity of puberty and its essential role as a period beginning with reproductive function awakening and culminating into sexual maturity. In contrast to the evolutionary and physical developmental adaptive properties of puberty, the social component of puberty historically was perceived as a major transition contributing to the turbulence and stress experienced by some adolescents. Adolescence as a period of storm and stress is an early to mid 20th century conception of adolescence that was viewed as a universal and biological in origin. The storm and stress perspective has been revised to represent a more balanced view of adolescence as a period of development characterized by biological cognitive, emotional and social reorganization with the aim of adapting to cultural expectations of becoming an adult. This revisionist perspective suggests that the adolescence is a period when specific types of problems are more likely to arise than in other periods of development, yet that these problems are not universal. Behavioral reorganization occurs in order to accommodate the changing social roles and it is important to note that adolescents change social roles thereby influencing their social environment. It also implies that the majority of adolescents experience neither maladjustment nor notable undesirable behaviors. In this image the hypothalamic pituitary and gonadal axis is shown. This image shows us how the hypothalamus the pituitary gland and the gonads work in unison to help the onset of puberty to indicate the changes that occur in our body during adolescence. The hypothalamus releases GnRH hormone, the pituitary gland also releases its respective hormones giving instruction to the gonad to release either estrogen or progesterone depending upon whether it is a boy experiencing puberty or a girl experiencing puberty. In a nutshell, puberty is marked by both social and biological processes. Biologically, puberty is occurring over a period of time during which neuroendocrine changes or the release of hormones result in the maturation of primary and secondary characteristics resulting in maturity of the reproductive system. Even though each adolescent experiences puberty and pubertal changes at different timings, this maturation depends upon a combination of genetic and environmental influences, which include early life experiences. Socially, these pubertal changes lead up to 
how the adolescent perceive themselves and how they are treated by others and early pubertal timing especially has been shown to have social consequences. While we know a great deal about the biological processes of puberty, much of the research particularly on the role of adverse early experiences is based on studies of girls rather than boys. Thus, it is important to monitor whether or not conclusions drawn from the extent research are relevant for both girls and boys. Despite this limitation, research on associations between stress exposure and pubertal timing and tempo make clear the importance of early experiences and highlights the role of social determinants of health. Stressful living conditions are related to earlier pubertal timing and accelerated pubertal tempo. While early puberty may be an evolutionary adaptive response to the context that reflects neurobiological plasticity, there are important consequences that suggest it may not be adaptive in terms of supporting a long-term path to health and well-being for youth living in the 21st century. Structural changes that disrupt the systematic factors that increase risk for early puberty, for example, resource deprivation as well as supportive relationships can lessen the risks associated with early puberty. They can foster positive outcomes and may promote adolescents' capability for resilience. Now let us understand the challenges faced due to early and late pubertal development. Typically, adolescent puberty occurs when a child is around 10 or 11 years old. However, there are children who start to physically and emotionally develop into young adults earlier. When this happens before the age of 7 or 8 year old, for girls and age 9 for boys, it is labeled precocious puberty or early puberty. Early puberty may seem innocuous or even advantageous when it comes to sports where size gives kids a leg up. But researchers have associated a number of health and psychological consequences of reaching puberty too early in life. Let us look at the signs of early puberty. For girls, True precocious puberty includes the following signs before the age of 7 or 8 years old. It includes development of breasts, growth of pubic or underarm hair, having a significant growth spurt in a short amount of time, starting menstruation, development of acne, development of body odor, isolated as their peers are not at the same stage of development and often teased by others. They tend to feel awkward and self-conscious. However, these feelings are temporary as once the others reach puberty, they experience a great deal of popularity among girls as well as boys. On the other hand, some studies show that early maturing girls are more popular, they have more older friends, they gain more attention from older boys, they enjoy greater prestige, they have more self-confidence and an improvement in their academic achievement also. Whereas, late maturation in girls has its own set of advantages and disadvantages. Let us look at the advantages. They have longer period of time to learn to cope with the changes and more opportunities to share the experiences with peers or friends than earlier maturing girls. Longer period which is free from restrictions. The disadvantages include late maturing girls have a different set of problems. Unlike their early maturing counterparts, these girls find themselves in childish state both physically and in sexual maturation, hence are prone to have less self-esteem. They have problems with peer relations and low self-esteem. They have difficulty with being treated like a child by parents and other adults. For boys, precocious puberty or early puberty includes the following signs before the age of 9 years, which can be seen as a benefit for boys as they can notice the following. It includes enlargement of testicles, the growth of pubic, underarm or facial hair, having a significant growth spurt in a short amount of time, deepening of the voice, development of acne and body odor. The disadvantages of early maturation in boys includes 
having less time to enjoy freedom that comes from childhood they are more likely to involve in problem or deviant activities on the other hand the late mature boys may suffer with socially induced inferiority because of their delayed growth and development this was studied in 1997 by hayward killen wilson and hammer at age 15 the late mature boys may be 8 inches shorter and 30 pounds lighter than his early maturing counterparts the disadvantages of late maturation in boys includes research studies showed that late maturing boys have several disadvantages they are found to be shorter and weaker perceived as childish by peers or friends they feel insecure about their capabilities they are more dissatisfied with their body because they may weigh 25 to 30 pounds less and 6 to 8 inches shorter than their peers they are less popular and less likely to take on leadership positions they feel strong feelings of inadequacy they have higher needs of autonomy they are less well groomed they are more restless and anxious they are bossy rebellious against parents and other adults they have negative self concept less self confidence and they need a lot of self assurance advantages of late maturity in boys some other studies throw light on certain favorable points related to late matures like being more flexible and adaptive and being able to better tolerate ambiguity there are many children that may show only some signs of early puberty for example some girls and boys may grow underarm hair or pubic hair at a very young age without any other sexual development the early hair growth may be partial precocious puberty and not a sign of any underlying condition these children will show the other expected signs of puberty later on and at the usual age causes although the exact reason behind early puberty is uncertain some instances of precocious puberty or early puberty have been attributed to the following 1 genetics 5% of boys and 1% of girls inherit the condition early nutritional problems followed by obesity environmental or chemical exposure structural problems in the brain or central nervous system and injuries a problem in the ovaries or thyroid gland usually starting puberty early is not due to any medical problem there is simply no known reason for why it happens now let us summarize the early and late pubertal changes that are faced by the adolescent one time of maturation affects the individual's social and emotional adjustment sex of the child also determines the advantage and disadvantage of being an early and late maturer 2 for boys it appears to be an advantage to reach the milestone of maturation early for girls maturing either early or late can be a source of great embarrassment and concern which can affect their self concept 4 early maturers of both boys and girls may be unprepared for the changes they experience 5 late maturers are less surprised by these changes and are better informed 6 late maturers have better role models individual characteristics include personality factors attitudes values and prior experiences cultural expectations play an important role in how adolescents respond to their physical changes 8 the advantages and disadvantages of being an early or late maturer depends on social environmental and value system 9 during this period parental guidance support and encouragement are important for pubertal adjustments than the time of maturation now let's go to the next topic cognitive development and changes in the brain of an adolescent adolescence is a time for rapid cognitive development cognitive theorist John Piaget describes adolescence as the stage of life in which the individual's thoughts start taking more of an abstract form and egocentric thoughts decrease. This allows an individual to think and reason with a wider perspective. 
This stage of cognitive development, termed by Piaget as the formal operational stage, marks a movement from an ability to think and reason from concrete visible events to an ability to think hypothetically and entertain what if possibilities about the world. An individual can solve problems through abstract concepts and utilize hypothetical and deductive reasoning. Adolescents use trial and error to solve problems and the ability to systematically solve a problem in a logical and methodical way emerges. Piaget's Stages of Cognitive Development Jean Piaget's theory of cognitive development includes four stages sensory motor, pre-operational, concrete operational and formal operational. In this image, we can see the four stages of cognitive development given by Jean Piaget. The first stage is called as sensory motor and lasts from 0 to 2 years. Here, the infant explores the world through direct sensory and motor contact. Object permanence and separation anxiety develop during this stage. Next comes the pre-operational stage lasting from 2 to 6 years. Here, the child uses symbols that is words and images to represent objects but does not reason logically. The child also has the ability to pretend. During this stage, the child is egocentric. The third stage is called as concrete operational stage that is ranging from 7 to 12 years. Here, the child can think logically about concrete objects and can thus add and subtract. The child also understands conversation. The last stage is called the formal operational stage that begins at 12 years and continues into adulthood. Here, the adolescent can reason abstractly and think in hypothetical terms. Biological changes in brain structure and connectivity in the brain interact with increased experience, knowledge and changing social demands to produce rapid cognitive growth. These changes generally begin at puberty or shortly thereafter and some skills continue to develop as an adolescent ages. Development of executive functions or cognitive skills that enable the control and coordination of thoughts and behavior are generally associated with the prefrontal cortex area of the brain. The thoughts, ideas and concepts developed at this period of life greatly influence one's future life and play a major role in character and personality formation. Perspectives and advancements in adolescent thinking. There are two perspectives on adolescent thinking, constructive and information processing. The constructivist perspective based on the work of Piaget takes a quantitative state theory approach. This view hypothesizes that adolescents cognitive improvement is relatively sudden and drastic. Whereas the information processing perspective derives from the study of artificial intelligence and explains cognitive development in terms of the growth of specific components of the overall process of thinking. Improvements in basic thinking abilities generally occur in five areas during adolescence. 1. Attention Improvements are seen in selective attention, that is, the processes by which one focuses on one stimulus while tuning out another, as well as divided attention, or the ability to pay attention to two or more stimuli at the same time. 2. Memory Improvements are seen in both working memory and long-term memory. 3. Processing speed. Adolescents think more quickly than children. Processing speed improves sharply between age 5 and middle adolescence. Levels of around age 15 and does not appear to change between late adolescence and adulthood. 4. Organization. Adolescents are more aware of their own thought processes and can use mnemonic devices and other strategies to think more efficiently. 5. Metacognition. Adolescents can think about thinking itself. This often involves monitoring one's own cognitive activity during the thinking process. Metacognition provides the ability to plan ahead, 
see the future consequences of an action and provide alternative explanations of events. Metacognition and Relativistic Thinking Metacognition is relevant in social cognition and results in increased introspection, self-consciousness and intellectualization. Adolescents are much better able to understand that people do not have complete control over their mental activity. Being able to introspect may lead to two forms of egocentrism or self-focus in adolescents which results in two distinct problems in thinking. The imaginary audience when an adolescent believes everyone is listening to him or her and the personal fable which causes adolescents to feel that nothing harmful could ever happen to them. Adolescents reach a stage of social perspective, that is, taking in which they can understand how the thoughts or actions of one person can influence those of another person, even if they personally are not involved. Adolescents are more likely to engage in relativistic thinking. In other words, they are more likely to question others' assertion and less likely to accept information as absolute truth. Through experience outside the family circle, they learn that rules they were taught as absolute are actually relativistic. They begin to differentiate between rules crafted from common sense, that is, don't touch a hot stove, and those that are based on culturally relative standards, codes of etiquettes. This can lead to a period of questioning authority in all domains. Summary As we have been discussing, adolescence is the period of transition between childhood and adulthood. Children who are entering adolescence are going through many changes. It includes physical, intellectual, personality and social development. Adolescence begins at puberty, which now occurs earlier on average than in the past. The end of adolescence is tied to social and emotional factors and can be somewhat ambiguous or confusing. 